and I would like to thank the organizers for um, giving us the opportunity to present. So we are interested in the development of fat cells and how microRNAs uh, regulate this process. So to highlight some things that have already been talked about, uh, transcription is um, a combinatorial uh, process and it in involves transcription factors that either dimerize or uh, bind to DNA a bit further from each other, but they definitely need to act together uh, to drive differentiation, uh, especially differentiation. And microRNAs, uh, as was uh, already shown uh, yesterday uh, by Danny Chia, are post-transcriptional uh, regulational molecules, and um, they actually can initiate uh, translational inhibition and also can downregulate mRNAs uh, in the cytosol. So, um, I think the microRNAs and transcription factors have something in um, common because they are um, both uh, able to um, target many different uh, molecules. Transcription factors can drive the expression of many genes and microRNAs can target many mRNAs. And microRNAs and transcription factors can act together uh, in order to specify, canalize uh, gene expression especially, as I was saying before, uh, during um, developmental processes and cell differentiation. So adipocytes are uh, uh, forming an endocrine organ. Uh, it's basically a fat storing tissue and the main transcription factors that drive um, the differentiation and the lipid accumulation in the cells are PPR gamma and CBP alpha. So they, um, PPR gamma is actually needed for adipogenesis, it's absolutely necessary. And um, it binds many, many enhancers on the genome and induces the expression of many genes. And for example, one of these genes is lipoprotein lipase and it's absolutely necessary for the cells to accumulate fat. So it, it's an enzyme that's secreted into the uh, extracellular um, space and uh, it's a dimer when it's uh, functional and it catalyzes the breakdown of triglyceride, triacylglycerides, so complex fats, into monomolecules that can be um, um, then brought into the cells, accumulated in the liposomes, and that is the fat of the, func um, the function of the fat cell. Sorry. Um, at the same time, um, it has already been shown that microRNAs are necessary for adipocyte differentiation. And for example, microRNA27 targets uh, the transcript of PPR gamma and is able to downregulate it so far that differentiation can be halted. MicroRNA27 is really highly expressed in the preadipocytes, as is, for example, the family um, of microRNAs29. And they are not related, but these both microRNA families are highly evolutionary conserved and really highly expressed. And we don't really um, know the exact function of microRNA29 family during differentiation, but we know that it's implicated, for example, in insulin uh, sensitivity and um, uh, excess adipose inflammation, uh, tissue inflammation. So my idea was that we have these two microRNA families that are really highly abundant. So can they function together uh, in preadipocytes to target certain transcripts that should not be translated and activated in pre-adipocytes yet. So uh, I just figured that uh, microRNA targets that should be downregulated in pre-adipocytes should be uh, upregulated during adipogenesis, so they should be highly expressed transcripts in mature adipocytes. So that's why we took um, a data set that was published uh, prior and um, in the group of uh, Jeffrey uh, Rosen, actually. And we took um, the mRNA expression levels of uh, mRNAs that are highly upregulated in, in developed 3T3L1 uh, fat cells, and they have already been mentioned yesterday. And then we took the predictions from target scan for um, microRNA targets for the family of 27 and the family uh, of 29. And when you overlay these, uh, uh, these gene lists, you end up with six genes um, 
that are upregulated during adipogenesis and targeted by both of the microRNA families. So they are all very interested, but um, mm, most of them they are implicated in general cellular functions, whereas LPL, lipoprotein lipase, as was shown before on the previous slide, is a very important molecule for fat accumulation into the cells, and it's really, really highly expressed. So that's why we chose to uh, focus on this gene further. And it's an enzyme uh, that has uh, nine exons, but at the same time it has a huge three prime UTR, which is actually almost um, the same size on the spliced mRNA as uh, the exons together. So it's more than 2400 nucleotides long. And in the end uh, of the three prime UTR, you have the microRNA binding sites. And they are highly evolutionary conserved uh, from mouse and other uh, mammals to human. And what's also important is that the microRNA binding sites are eight mer full complementary sites, which indicates really strong binding by the microRNA families. And we checked uh, from uh, ChIP-seq uh, data and uh, chromatin uh, status data uh, which of the microRNA members, because microRNA 27 has two members and 29 has three members, which of these members are um, really regulated during uh, adipogenesis, and it's 27A and 29A, which are the most abundant, so I will be talking about this um, uh, further on. So when you quantify the expression levels of the microRNAs during differentiation, this is a time course of eight days, you see that the microRNAs, they are downregulated from the day zero on, so directly when the cells get um, uh, the push to differentiate, the microRNAs um, are downregulated. And when you look at um, the potential targets uh, of the microRNAs, you can see um, that from day two on, uh, they are highly upregulated. So they have um, uh, an inverse uh, correlation in their expression profiles. So the, the first <coughs> thing to do, sorry, is to um, functionally check whether the microRNAs can bind the three prime UTR of our uh, gene of interest. So the, three, the whole three prime UTR was cloned into um, an, an expression reporter gene vector that has two um, reporter genes and one of them was coupled to the three prime UTR. And then when co-transfected um, in an artificial system together with the microRNAs, we can see that both 27A and 29A can significantly um, downregulate the expression of the reporter gene, um, indicating that it can bind the three prime UTR. And when you co-transfect um, this uh, plasmid together with microRNAs and microRNA inhibitors, antagomers, you can see that this effect is released, uh, showing again that possibly it's the microRNAs targeting the three prime UTR. Uh, we checked this also in uh, mature adipocytes, uh, so I overexpressed over both of the microRNAs in day six differentiated adipocytes, where the levels of PPR gamma and LPL are really, really high. And as you can see, the uh, microRNA 27 can target the transcription factor, as well as uh, its target gene. So these measurements were done 24 hours after transfection, um, and um, I think the transfection is severely um, bad for the cells. Um, but here is where we really saw that the only significant effect from both of the microRNAs is when you transfect them together in an ecumolar concentration. So this was very interesting. But that's only 24 hours after transfection. When you wait three days after the transfection, you can really see that the microRNAs um, have um, impaired the function of the mature secreted enzyme. So this is a, an enzyme activity assay showing that the microRNAs really can influence the functional enzyme and uh, the way it can hydrolyze um, fat. So we decided to uh, look at this in some more detail. So we constructed a small um, uh, model composed of ordinary differential equations. And here you see the structure of the model. Uh, where we have 10 states, so we have mRNA, we have protein, and we have microRNAs. And in 24 reactions with 22 parameters, um, we basically uh, just describe 
the way that the microRNAs can target um, these two molecules. And uh, in the upper part of the chart, you can see the, the a loop connecting and driving the expression of uh, PPR gamma and CBP alpha, which are the main uh, factors for driving the adipogenic process. And um, what we really want to, to show you here is that you kind of have this combinatorial feed-forward loop where microRNA 27, 29 target LPL and the 27A targets LPL also through its transcription factor inhibition. So we fitted the model parameters to the time course. And as you can see, the, the model uh, fits uh, rather well. And always um, indicated in fading red, you see the, the confidence levels of, of the model parameters. And now you, see, um, you will see the confidence levels of the model predictions. So um, again, if you have the functional feed forward loop with the wild type um, expression, we would uh, like to see what happens when you overexpress the microRNA just in the normal system. So when you overexpress the microRNA on day six of differentiation, you can see that the model predicts the reduction in the levels of LPL transcript. And when you overexpress them both together, the effect is stronger. And it's really not recovered because microRNA 27 is also targeting PPR gamma. But uh, what you can ask also the model, uh, what you cannot do so easily experimentally, uh, that you block the connection from 27A to the uh, transcription factor, so PPR gamma. And you can uh, again ask what happens. Uh, so in the white type condition, you can already see that you have a three-fold over um, expression of the LPL transcript during a differentiation. Furthermore, when you overexpress uh, 27, then um, on day six again, you have a really fast recovery of the, the mRNA transcript, uh, which would then uh, feed from, from the high exp higher expressions of PPR gamma. And when you overexpress both of the microRNAs together, you have a stronger e impact from the microRNAs, but at the same time, you still have a really fast recovery for the uh, LPL mRNA. So to conclude, we really uh, think that um, these two microRNAs can directly bind the um, three prime UTR of LPL and inhibit uh, these transcripts from translation. And uh, we also uh, see that uh, microRNA 29 actually has a stronger effect on the LPL mRNA if uh, the t effect from 27A is missing on the transcription factor. And we also saw that this small model can rather well capture the effects um, of the dynamics of microRNA repression on its targets. And this can then further be used, for example, for metabolic models uh, where you have large pathways and where you can then uh, um, spike in small um, quantitative models of microRNA effects on its targets. So i leave you with the small picture um, together with um, my team. Uh, of Luxembourg. So Luxembourg is trying to enhance uh, biomedicine and that's kind of the way it works at the moment. So they're trying to move from one kind of an era to a new era where they construct huge buildings and construct huge labs. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, this, this would be an experiment that you could do. You could um, highly overexpress the microRNAs prior to initiation of differentiation, and then you can check whether um, the differentiation uh, would actually um, go faster or slower. Uh, I haven't done this experiment, really, sorry. Uh, but I would say that uh, the effect from the microRNAs in the beginning might not be so strong. It's really when, when they are um, overexpressed in differentiated cells, I think that's when you have the bigger impact. Any other questions before lunch? <laughs> All right, thank you, Maria, again. <laughs>